Hello race fans, Keith Collantine here. McLaren have unveiled their challenger for the 2021 Formula 1 season, the MCL 35M. Last year McLaren took advantage of Ferrari's poor form and narrowly beat Racing Point and Renault to score their best finish in the Constructors' Championship since 2012. Can they repeat or even improve on that this year with their new car? As will be the case with all of the team's cars for 2021, several aerodynamic details have been changed so their car complies with the new technical regulations for the coming season. These aim to cut back on rising downforce levels which were blamed for some spectacular tyre failures last year, one of which affected McLaren at Silverstone. The floor in front of the rear tyres has been slimmed down and it no longer features any aerodynamic devices along its outer edge. Now, due to the pandemic, the launch of the MCL 35M was held behind closed doors at the McLaren Technology Centre. It saw Daniel Ricciardo's first public involvement with the McLaren F1 team, which he signed for back in May. This will be Ricciardo's 11th season in Formula 1, and he begins a three-year deal with McLaren as he continues to chase his first world championship. Lando Norris will be partnering Ricciardo this season as he begins his third season in F1. Great things were expected of the pair, not just for their celebrated antics off the track. McLaren Racing CEO Zach Brown reckons he's got the best driver lineup in Formula 1 today in Ricardo and Norris. McLaren described their new car's livery as a subtle progression of last year's, and they weren't joking. The MCL 35M is almost indistinguishable from their 2020 car. But the largest and most significant change to the car is under the engine cover, where last year's Renault power unit has been replaced with a Mercedes M12 e performance. But given the restrictions on car development this year, incorporating the new power unit was not a straightforward job, as technical director James Key explains. Yeah, so, so I, I, I think the difficulties or challenges, let's say, in, in installing a Mercedes power unit um, the, the things I've said, you know, the COVID situation, the working from home, the regulation changes. We also had cars homologated, which meant that it was quite a different way of installing an engine because we had to try and stay true to last year's car. But clearly with an awful lot of the car having to change for the engine. So it was a slight compromise in that respect. And you had to try and um, take as many surfaces and designs that were homologated on the chassis, on the gearbox and so on. Um, but adapt the areas which needed adapting to the engine. Slightly suboptimal in a way, but um, we had some sensible conversations with FA as we worked through that. Uh, so that was a, an additional challenge. But I, I think any, any power unit installation is, is a challenge because there's no one way of doing these things. They're so complicated that unlike the V8s years back when they're all quite similar, these are quite unique from one power, power unit supplier to another. So we had, um, you know, things like cooling systems are very different between one and another. I've, I've worked with all the power units now and I, I, I know that for a fact. Uh, the architecture of the power units is different. Uh, the energy store shapes and, and, and volumes and positioning and connection even to the engine is different. And so you have to work through all of that installation from a, a physical point of view. But then you've got things like electronics and software. Uh, you've got the load cases going through your drivetrain which could be different from one engine to another. And all of those challenges had to be faced in this shortened time period whilst working from home um, to, uh, to try and come out with something that was digitally you know, good, but clearly in, in reality needed to be proven. And, uh, and we managed it. It was a massive effort from the team. It was great support from Mercedes. And um, to, get to, the, to get to the point of, of actually installing everything and, and running it for real was a really fantastic achievement, I think. So McLaren and Mercedes are back together for the first time in seven years, reforming a partnership which previously spanned two decades. For much of that time, McLaren was a Mercedes works team, but today, of course, they are a customer, the same as Williams and Aston Martin. No Mercedes branding on the outside of the McLaren then, but the team will be hoping Mercedes standard setting power unit allows them to continue to build on the momentum they have built in the past two seasons. Thanks very much for watching. Hit subscribe now so you don't miss the next Race Fans Formula 1 video. And for more F1 news, features and pictures, make sure you're following at racefans.net on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.